The New York Giants, a team that has been in such a bad spot basically for the last 12 years, I know they made the playoffs twice during that time, that we forgot that they won two Super Bowls with Eli Manning within the last 15 total. They've actually been a pretty successful franchise, but they've been so down in the dumps lately that you almost forget about that. And, you know, it kind of feels like, ironically enough, very tied in with this team. The Patriots are going to be a part of that as well as they're just not, they're not just bad. They're like bottom, bottom barrel bad. Which, of course, we're going to be trying to fix. Obviously, the Giants, they said, we want a pass rusher. We will have money once we finally get rid of that really awful contract that everyone knew was bad, even the own fans of the team, to Daniel Jones. And we're going to get ourselves an edge rusher. They, of course, traded a second-round pick to get Mr. Rashawn Gary. And, I mean, in the process, they already got that second-round pick back beforehand by trading off Leonard Williams, which was a pretty damn good trade, obviously. Uh, but looking at this team, it is in a spot. Pick six overall, it could be a multitude of things, maybe even a trade down, maybe even a quarterback, but wide receiver first and foremost is probably the number one thing. They've had a bunch of bandage players like Hodgins uh, and uh, I guess Wandale Robinson slash Hyatt. Didn't really get to see much from either of them, specifically Hyatt, but some of these wide receiver draft picks, especially Wandale Robinson, which was a bit of a, of a reach, have been a little questionable. Darius Slayton is, by definition, easily their number one, which isn't saying a whole lot, especially in a Madden rebuild sense, because that's ceiling. 82, 83 overall at best. Uh, looking at the offensive line, obviously you have yourself a franchise tackle in Andrew Thomas, who had a little bit of a down year, but when you have such a great year, a down year is almost inevitable, really. The rest of the line, though, I mean, Evan Neal, so far, not so great. Ron, you know, Runyon from the Packers, Pretty good pass blocker, but isn't the best. But it's it's a decent bandage, if you're going to call it that. And then the rest, I mean, we got to replace a lot. We got to replace a lot. Tight end, Darren Waller, you know, when healthy, he's a pretty good tight end. He's been decent. Maybe that's a position we look for uh, in the future. And then obviously quarterback, we talked about it. It's just, it was not a good decision. Then it looks somehow, crazy to think, somehow worse now. And it was such a bad contract that, I mean, even in the rest of the league, no one believes in it. I mean, you look at some of the other contracts, like Baker Mayfield. Like, that was a contract that even then, that would make more sense for Daniel Jones. And even then, it would be too high for him. Uh, but yeah, the whole league, even though there's exploding contracts, they, they consider Daniel Jones' contract an outlier, which is saying something. With free agency, you know, going up and up for pretty much every position, for you to be wrong that bad at the most important position, you know you've done something astronomically bad. Um, but looking at the rest of the team, defense, this is where, you know, the team is a bit better. They're a little bit better on defense. You hopefully have your cornerback and Deontay Banks. Once again, didn't really get to see a whole lot there. Brian Burns, obviously, he's a he's basically a franchise edge. You would easily argue that. Uh, Thibodeau had a pretty good season. Uh, and then linebackers, Okereke was great. Simmons was okay, I guess. Um, Turns out being, you know, good at a lot of things is nowhere near as important as being great at one thing. Uh, very athletic, and that's kind of the extent of him, if you will. Safeties, we need some work for sure. Corner, we need some work. Dexter Lawrence is easily, I mean, by a significant amount, their best player. It's just not even a question, and... We definitely need to help him out a little bit on, uh, you know, in that interior. We're going to be forced to run a 3-4, which you know how that works in Madden. It's despicable. It is the worst thing you could ever wish upon someone is being stuck in a 3-4. But we have no choice. We have given Brian Burns that five-year 141, so the money is it's tight right now. I also didn't really mention Singletary, but, you know, a good shining spot for that run game in Houston where Damian Pierce really didn't look good. And you can't say, oh, it's because of the injury or whatever. Just didn't look great. You know, he looked like the guy that was going to be that guy, but there's a reason why Joe Mixon's there now. You know, just saying. Uh, decent running back. Is he the guy? I don't know. We're going to be looking at running back and for sure, and it'd be nice to have Singletary as, like, the backup or the third down running back, if you will, uh, instead of the actual starter. Contracts, I mean, kind of expensive. Was it with a 3-year 18, 3-year 21, one of the two? It's not crazy, but... You know, considering the running back markets, considering how many running backs there were, you kind of figured they could have got them even cheaper than that. But either way, that's basically the starting point. And there's a good chance I take wide receiver at six. I think it's a hard position to draft and develop in a CPU setting. And when we're using Bengals draft class, ironically enough, you know, his favorite team. I mean, the Bengals are his favorite team, obviously, not the Giants. Uh, you know, I, I kind of want to knock out a sure, you know, position if I can. And 
Malik Neighbors has been mocked to them almost as much as, you know, Caleb Williams has been to the Bears. And I gotta be honest with you, if he's available, I'm probably going to do the boring thing. And by boring, I mean very exciting, but boring in the sense that, you know, it's kind of expected. Ew, dynamic franchise wide receiver, yucky, boring. But speaking of boring, if you guys like uh, franchise videos, rebuild videos of uh, any nature, maybe uh, stick around by subscribing. Maybe leave a like if you enjoy the video. I can't say you enjoy the video yet. It's pretty early for that. And of course, if you're not new, I appreciate your continued support. I promised that this Giants rebuild was coming, and here it is. And that's basically that. Of course, a little bit more raw Neighbors is than uh, Marvin Harrison. I gotta take Neighbors, even if Marvin's there at six, though, because if the Cardinals aren't trading down from four, they are, you know, taking Marvin. And in the sense that they don't do any of that, the Chargers probably have to take Marvin. It's really like the Chargers take wide receiver if Marvin's there at five. But if not... Maybe they trade down because they need a bunch of stuff. I'm not sure. But I think Neighbors is the most realistic pick here. And even then, he could be gone at five. So uh, I think Neighbors at six is going to be our choice. And I'm hoping I didn't ruin anything. But I raised Jaden Daniels overall a little bit. Just so hopefully the Patriots take him. Uh, I'm just hoping that... I mean, I guess to be fair, he could go at number two overall in fairness. But let's hope that doesn't mess anything up there. It didn't. And... Nope. The Patriots are dead set on a damn tackle at three. Yep. Maybe the next thing is to move or boost their left tackle. That's probably what I should do instead. I mean, at the end of the day, a game that prioritizes tackle over quarterback when they have zero quarterbacks is kind of crazy. Pick four overall has been Dallas Turner like every time, and then it's been tackle every time at number five. And I know there's a lot of people, I mean, I even seen people saying like, you know, for our last rebuild with the Broncos, maybe check that out, uh, you know, Jaden Daniels at 12, that's fair, fine, do it. It's not, it's just not fair. <laughs> I mean, Jaden Daniels at six is probably not fair, let alone at number 12. Um, and I'm going to make that argument that, uh, again, I, I guess I really didn't think about it, but I could go Jaden Daniels or McCarthy. I'm just going to go that, you know, with the idea that the Giants aren't ready for quarterback anyways, and I'm going to take myself uh, Malik Neighbors. I think that's the, the predictable pick, and that's who we're going to be taking. 95 speed, 96 excel. Malik Neighbors, wide receiver one, how are you? And we're going to move on to the next round, but we are still sitting here at one uh, with the Panthers. Uh, what do we got here? Uh, Penix, could trade up for Penix. Haven't really seen, uh, well, I haven't really done any rebuilds where he is the guy for us. Quarterback is interesting. It would be very interesting. Like I said, not really ready for a quarterback, but I also don't know what Penix is like dev is. Maybe he's hidden in this class, but... Also have Powers Johnson, who's likely going to be a late first, but I'll allow it early second. Uh, you know, could really use anyone on the interior. Guy that could play guard probably does make a lot more sense at center. At the same time, do you want to trade up or do you want to just you know save what you what little you have? I think if you're trading up, it has to be a game changer. I don't know if I can say that a center is a game changer. Uh, it would be nice, but I don't think it's a game changer. I would like to go with McKinstry or Rakestraw, I think. McKinstry or Rakestraw. So we're going to kind of play this by ear. McKinstry, Rakestraw, or Penix. And uh, whenever one of them is the last one, that's who we're taking. Well, that's not good. <laughs> uh, let's see. We're moving all right. We're moving all right. Lassiter. Was Lassiter on my list? Who was I talking about? I just, I literally just mentioned them. Was Lassiter on my list? Rakestraw. That's the guy. So far, so good. Definitely so far, so good. Pick 13, Bo Nix. And we're going to have a choice. We're going to have a choice of Penix or Rake Straw. Once again, talking about what's harder to get, what's more important. Where's the value? Penix at 16. Is that value? I think so. Penix at 16, huh? I'm taking him. Michael Penix. Normal dev, 93 throw power. I think Daniel Jones has just been realistically... I mean, I guess in 2022, he wasn't the worst player I've ever seen. But not the best either. And then obviously, this last year, didn't really get to see much from him. But really bad when we did. I think I just start Penix right out the gate. He's 23. I'm just going to do it. I don't really care. And we trade 71 with a next year fourth to 50. Was it 50, I think? Uh, for... I would imagine Rake Straw. The value is absolutely there. A lot of good corners, in fairness, so you can kind of see why maybe you'd see some foliage. I also kind of wanted Theo Johnson. I felt like 
getting a guy like Theo Johnson when you already have Waller there is just so fitting. Uh, we do need O-line, so I'm going to see if there's any value there at O-line as well. DT is a massive position of need. Uh, any other position linebacker could use it, but I think we can roll with the two we got. But I think Rake Straw makes a lot of sense, especially since we were going to go with him over Penix, and we end up with both. Safety's a huge position need too, but I think corner's a little bit more valuable than safety. Uh, I'm a little honestly surprised to see some of the contracts coming out about, you know, with safety lately. But I think this is going to have to be Mr. Rake Straw. The value is just too immense. Where is Rake Straw? There he is, Ennis Rakestraw, 21, 6 foot tall, okay speed, looks good, welcome, hidden dev, we love it. And I know we're trading up a lot, but there's a good chance that I do trade up for running back as well. I don't know who I want, I mean I know I want Benson, but I, yeah, I don't know if the value is there at, th at 7 for Quorum, I do see, I don't know dude, I want a running back, but yeah, you know what, Singletary is a good enough player, I'm going to go to the next round. Singletary's good enough. Gray, you have Eric Gray as well. I think it may be if Bucky Irving's here, you take him. But as far as trading up for a running back goes, I don't know. Bucky Irving, he is here. Uh, 21, 5, 11, uh, 5, 10. No, looks all right. I don't, I don't mind it. I'm going to go Bucky Irving. Welcome. Oh, he's hidden. 89 speed, 91 excel. Okay. That's not bad. I also have, I don't know if his name is Estime, Estimi. Um, but, uh, I have him on the list too, because I don't know, obviously I, I, he's not quite Brandon Jacobs, but power back. I mean, I feel like honestly, I really thought AJ Dillon was going to be a giant this off season, but he kind of rejoined green Bay on like a super low deal. I don't know. I just, I miss the Ahmad Bradshaw, Brandon Jacobs days. I'm not even a giants fan, but I just miss him. I just miss those days. Brandon Jacobs is literally one of my favorite players of all time. Just because how big he was. Wasn't even that spectacular. It was good. But he wasn't even that spectacular. But man, what a dude. I mean, I haven't even brought back, really, the uh, Blast of the Past series. But I might bring it back just to roll Brandon Jacobs out there one more time. Like, I truly just enjoyed watching him. And as far as DTs go, I mean, I've never taken Makai Wingo. That might be my choice here, though. I think we might have no choice. Oh, Trey Taylor, a safety. He's all right. Trey Taylor, 89 speed. We'll take it. I mean, he might start because Jalen Mills is like, you want to talk about bandages. My man's the damn mummy. He will come in, do an okay job for your safety room. He's not going to become an all-pro, but he's going to do enough. Uh, and Makai Wingo is still there. So Wingo, 22 years old, 6'1". You know, like I said in the past of some other rebuilds with the real-life draft classes, you know, the, the, the offensive linemen outside of the first round are almost all normal dev. So while teams may need O-line really badly, I got to keep it in the realm of realistic maddenness rather than IRL realism. And I need to take the best value for the team, uh, which is definitely not O-line late. But I would like to grab at least someone if there's someone here. Nugent. Have we taken... I think we just took Nugent like a rebuild ago and we just didn't use him. But this rebuild, the team's actually so bad in that interior that he might actually be used. So I'm going to take Nugent again and this time at least use him for a season. Might have even used him in the last rebuild, but it is what it is. Uh, I, I know he, he sat bench for a while. But we're moving on to the 14th pick in the 7th round. I'm not even sure if this is how many of the picks the team has. But for the most part, we have it almost fully realistic, which is all one could really ask for. I'm going to take a look at some of the projections. Because I know some of these guys like Rice are a bit higher than the 7th round. But, you know, Baker, Weiss, and uh, Johnson, if they're all fair, I'm going to take one of them. Cornelius Washington, or Johnson is basically the most realistic name. He's like a fifth round projected, but, you know, things happen. Seventh round, it's not that crazy. Uh, 91 speed, 90 XL with that size. I think Baker's like a third round projected now, basically a fourth in fairness. And then Weiss, if that's his name, is not even this year. So um, I think we did a pretty good job in the draft. I'll tell you what positions I would have went with if the value made sense. Uh, at the end of the day, Madden is different than real life. In Madden, the CPO class is guaranteed. Right, whatever user class, CPU class, whatever their overalls are, that's what they are. In real life, it doesn't work like that, right? Like I could take a seventh round player in real life, and he's a god. Um, but looking at the players, you know, some low overall overalls here and there, but definitely some starters. Penix, I think, is just going to be the starter right away. Like I said, there just doesn't seem to be a whole lot of redeeming qual. Look at the ratings, though. A whole lot of re redeeming qualities for um, Daniel Jones and. 
I mean, honestly, one would argue why they even re-signed him in the first place, to try and defend the decision to draft him in the beginning. I don't know how you, why you would double down like that, but sure. I mean, there's potential there with Daniel, but I don't know. I don't know. But uh, looking at Malik Neighbors, amazing. He's amazing. I think we've drafted him once before. I know we drafted Marvin quite a bit. We've drafted probably Brian Thomas the most. Superstar Dev wearing 80. I'm getting Cruz vibes. Actually, kind of similarly built, ironically enough, as well. I already looked at Penix, but uh, Rake Straw, I did remember him being hidden, I believe. Very good value there. He's our number two. Great press. Uh, he's him. Irving, I think, is going to be the starter because we need to develop a running back. Uh, you know, great juke ability. Not a whole lot of trucking. Stiff arm, but, you know, we're talking about Ahmad Bradshaw. <laughs> not everyone has to be exactly like a former player, but, you know, just throwing some, uh, throwing some names out there. Trey Taylor, very raw, but... At least he has a ceiling compared to some of the other players. Then we have a six-rounder in Makai Wingo, who uh, has a little bit of finesse. I mean, he's basically, by default, forced to start. Uh, Nugent probably left guard. And then Johnson got a lot of, like, decent overalls on this team. But as far as, like, will they develop into goons? Probably not. So it makes the most sense to start him in a Madden standpoint, but in a realism standpoint, not so much. Also, with Cap, I do believe the team converted... Uh, a little bit of Dexter's money to be under the cap. I don't know if that's because they needed to be under the cap or they're just trying to save a little bit more. But, uh, yeah, we're in a bit of a spot, personally. So we're going to have to try to find some money, maybe even do that restructure uh, well, you know, with Dexter like they did. Here is the roster for year one. Definitely not the best we've ever seen, but uh, there's some improvements, right? We have a wide receiver one for sure, potential quarterback one, potential running back one. Added Lake Tomlinson from free agency as the Jets released him, I believe, and the rest is basically as expected. We move on to the defensive side of the ball where we didn't add too much here. I'm going to be honest with you. We got a new cornerback too, which is, you know, the corners look like they should be good for the rest of this rebuild. New free safety, maybe he gets a dev up. New right end, maybe he gets a dev up, and uh, Ioannidis is... He's just a bandage where nothing good can come of it. But obviously, we added a, a bit more to the offense, especially in the higher picks this year than the uh, defense. So maybe the next year is defense. I don't know. But just really mainly hoping that Penix is the guy. It's been an awful season. But Dane Belton with a breakout scenario. I was about to say he has to be 20K because he is. he's starting off a little low. He's a little low. We'll take it, though. How old is he? 24? 23? We can live with 23. We can do it. I wish I was still 23. Kind of. Ish. I guess. Yeah, why not? Maybe invest in some Bitcoin, but you know. <laughs> Speed, nice. You like to see that. 74 all should, should be about what? A 75, 76 overall here. Uh, we're not looking too bad at strong safety then with Dane Belton getting his dev up. Would love to see a little bit more zone coverage upgrades, but we'll take it. We got a speed upgrade in there as well. Three to zone. Puts him at 75 zone. After all of those upgrade points, which is crazy to think about. Brian Burns now in 88, I believe. Is that the number? No. 86? Well, I don't know, dude. 88. 87. 88. Uh, neighbors. He needs release, so we're going to be going with physical. All right, so apparently we're going to have 41 mil going forward. Darius Slayton. Man, I don't know about Darius Slayton or Isaiah Hodgins. Ashawn Robinson. Was that like a random free agent sign? I don't even know, but... Drew Locke, Lincoln Tomlinson, there is a lot of mid. A lot of mid needs to be re-signed, and I don't think I'm going to be doing that. So, it was not a playoff season. Uh, not even close to a playoff season. Maybe even the worst team in the league at 2-15. and 15. Penix might already be done for, and it's not even his fault. It's simply due to the fact that if we have the first pick overall, and there is a quarterback that looks like a goon, maybe finally a generational quarterback... I have no choice but to take them. Michael Pratt, I don't know where he went, but he is a god, apparently. But yeah, the roster is still really crap. 2-15 and 15 crap? That seems a little low, but they said 2-15 and 15 crap, I suppose. Let's take a look at the numbers. Penix, terrible. Rushing, terrible. Receiving, neighbors, nice. Maybe uh, X-Factor. Slayton, okay. Hyatt, okay. Waller, not the best. Olan, okay. But Thomas giving up 13 sacks is hilariously bad by EA. Edge Rush, Thibodeau, six and a half. Three and a half for Lawrence, three and a half for Burns. I love this video game. This is a video game that is good. Honestly, I think you have no choice but to just go 4-3 every time. I'm just going to be switching this whole team to a 4-3 because you're just not going to put up good numbers if you don't, and I'm sick of it. I'm just sick of it. Uh, looking at all... We didn't get Offensive Rookie of the Year. That sucks. 
Drake May, I'd love to see how well he played. But yeah, no dev ups at all. I mean, well, maybe not no dev ups, but no, uh, no awards, I should say, which I don't think surprised anyone after seeing the record that we had. Chiefs versus the Eagles, super fun new matchup. Love to see it. Let's see who wins this one. And it is the Eagles. A little bit of revenge, I suppose. Any dev ups, maybe neighbors, and outside of that, probably no one. Neighbors does go, so he is already an X Factor of one year. Uh, he was a superstar, moved on to X Factor, and now we cook. Wide receiver one is absolutely set, if it wasn't already abundantly clear. We now look at the defense, which I do not believe a single player went up. So, I mean, kind of a garbage season. I'm not really sure what we gained this season. Like, nothing. $30 million, Thibodeau. 13 mil, that is really cheap. I can't lie, that's really cheap. Evan Neal... That is pretty expensive for 74 overall. He's probably just going to be gone, and we'll look to replace him, I'd say. Um, we have no money, no talent, and no bitch. Uh, big shots on this team. Kayvon Tibbs. I'm going to do the fifth year. I need to save money. Free agency, $28 million. We need literally anything. Literally anything. Uh, that, of course, isn't old, which they're all old. Wyatt Teller, I'm kind of half tempted to do it. O-line is obviously a problem, but more importantly, he's interested in joining us. I don't usually see interested parties. That is very rare for us. Wide receivers, uh, you know, Jerry Judy, maybe? Do you not just draft one? We have pick one overall, so we can get someone in the second round, perhaps. It would be nice to just get, like, a bandage fix so I don't have to spend draft capital on, uh, you know, a player like that. Rashad Bateman, we just kind of made that move. Didn't really work in general, either. Elijah Moore... That is interesting. That is interesting. I don't know what to do here. I, I want a wide receiver. I should draft one, but I kind of want to just have that position filled without having to worry about spending those picks. So basically, oh, we don't have our own second round draft pick? What is that from? Was that real? Was that a real life? I think I accidentally gave the Panthers two second round picks. Because I don't think... We owe anyone this year's pick, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe I'm accidentally cheating and I didn't realize it, but I took the pick back. Uh, I looked forward and it said that this team has those picks. Uh, looking at the draft, though, I gotta be honest with you, we're gonna be probably playing this pretty unrealistically. Uh, unless we go tackle with the first pick, which kind of looks pretty good, but he, I don't know. I, I don't know. Maybe he's generational, perhaps, but this draft class looks terrible for the positions we need. We need quarterback. The best is a B, a B, a C, and a B. A B, okay, sure, I just, I just realized how I uh, laid that one out there. There looks like no one even close, other than maybe this left tackle, to guaranteed, maybe the center. Uh, nobody, literally nobody. And I am not in the mood to risk things when I don't have positions of need here. Maybe there's a team with a pass rusher need. I don't need one. We are, we are just not in a need of those positions. So I'm going to be trading this pick down. It's going to be like the first time pick one's traded for like a super trade down because I'm talking like pick 20. If I can get to pick 20. If there's a team with multiple first round picks still for this year, they are be they are receiving this pick. I believe this is a fair trade for us. We ended up getting uh, pick 7, 39, 51, 71, and a first next year from the Bears. You can argue that it could have been even more but they take that trade, and we are going to see what the Bears want at number one overall, and it was a pass rusher. We're going to trade in a uh, pick seven this year, a fourth this year, a fourth and a fifth next year with Ron Wandale Robinson for pick, I think it was 19, 50, and then 59, which, once again, you could argue all you want. Oh, it's not realistic to trade down. Oh, they actually traded up for the really good tackle. I actually almost took him, too. I almost did. He'd say it's unrealistic that uh, we're making this many trade downs, but at the same time, if there was somehow a team that knew exactly what was going to be good value and what was going to be bad value, they would do the same. And that is the realm of reality that we live in with this rebuild. And I'm really just like leaving no stone unturned here, as I think I am going to take someone with this pick. I don't know who, but it will be someone. And I think that player is going to be Dalton Coakley, the safety who is in dev with 90 speed, 90 excel, 86 excel, or 90 jump, 86 excel, and 90 agility, 85 change of direction. That was actually a tough decision. There were some pretty good players there. Now we're going to be kind of slow simming until we're left with like one of our wide receivers. We have a couple of them that look pretty good. Wide receiver is definitely the biggest need next 
Uh, and so far, so good. I kind of want to get to, like, at least 32 so I can get a fifth-year option on that wide receiver in case they cook. And can we trade with the Eagles? No, because they're an interdivisional. Uh, but screw it. Avery James, rest in peace. We also do have a need for tight end. Uh, the guys I had on my list were Flanagan. I think Flanagan's, like, our, our best bet. You know, he's decent. He's a third-round guy. I don't have to go that high. And he, he's comparable to the only other option, which would be pretty much Logan. And uh, Logan, I mean, he looks okay. He's 6'3". He's not bad, but I, I think the other guy looks just as good, if not better. So I think that's going to be the choice there. And then wide receiver. This is a tough choice, but I'm, I'm thinking Favors is probably the best bet. It's not a great group of players here, i got to be honest. Cam Hitchens looks okay. Then you do have a 1-2. to two. And Averill, who is also on my list, he looks okay, but... I like the goods on that left side from Averill, but Favors has a little bit better of, like, the key ratings on screen. But even though with a 4 4 5, the left side speed in Excel tells me he's not that great. But look at those ratings. I'm going to take Calvin Favors. He's my guy. And he's hidden. That is the biggest player we needed for hidden, is the wide receiver. 6 4, 21, just fast enough. Great jumping. Hidden dev. That's the big dub. I'm going to have to take Averill as well. Just line them all up. Give them all. Give me all of the players. And we could use multiple DTs. The problem is I have no idea who to go with. I think Adkinson maybe 2-3 to three would make a little bit of sense. Linebacker we kind of need. But uh, we have a couple of 1-2s. to I just don't know much about them, right? Like where maybe he's in a block shed. I suppose George Williams we kind of know about. He's 21 years old. George Williams. Yeah, I'm going to take him. Yeah, Nev, we're cooking. What can I ask for? Pick one trade down has been goaded so far. Did I sell making that play? I don't think I did. Because I think, you know, our big thing was DT, which I'm probably going to just let go now. I think I'm going to let go till the third round for DT. Um, O-line for sure. Center, definitely, we want. Uh, still some other DT types. But I think they're going to trade these picks down to, like, the start of the third. That's a, not a bad trade. Going to 60, gaining that third round for, like, a year from now, two years from now, whatever. I just want to move. You know, that's all that matters. I don't really care what position it is i'm just moving spots you know as long as i'm moving you know in the early third late second range i don't really care what it is for even that that pick right there i'm willing to do um, i mean i'm willing to do that pick whatever fourth round two years from now to move back like i don't know 10 spots or something like that that's fine then not even 10 spots less than that we have three picks in a row i think we might make some <laughs> We might actually make some of these picks as well. But I think first and foremost, Levy looks like by far the best lineman remaining. I mean, debatably, even a first-round pick level uh, lineman. Cole Levy, that's the guy. Hidden Dev, win number one. And then I'm not super high on the tight end, I'll be honest with you. He looks good, but I'm not that high on him. But I have to take him. I need a new tight end. Ethan Flanagan. And he's hidden. Maybe I was wrong. 84 speed, 80 XL, Hidden Dev. This draft is cooked. I don't know what their actual devs are, right? They might all be freaking star dev. But this is one of our best drafts we've ever had. Obviously, trading down from one will help. It definitely will help. But still, so far, so very good. And do I not just take Atkinson? Bridges was going to be my guy, but I think I'm going to take Atkinson. Randy Atkinson, pretty fast, good strength. And also hidden! This draft is cooking! What's our next picks? We obviously have that first pick. Do we have anything else? We have seven as well. We are actually going in right now. We're like fixing the team in one year. Who says tanking? I mean, losing doesn't have its perks. Kelly, I don't know what to think here. Really bad run block, but great pass. Well, I wouldn't say great pass block, but good pass block. Hoping for one of those types. I kind of... A part of me was kind of like, yeah, I don't know, dude. I'm not... This is like easily the first guy we've seen that i'm like eh, i don't know about that and of course he was bad oh that sucks he might be decent but obviously bad in the sense that well he's not hidden so who cares uh linebackers felton looks great harvey looks decent pharaoh looks pretty good i think i might go bruce felton 21 years old not starting in this year any oh he looks great oh he looks great that is an amazing player and i mean i could use more linemen but i am kind of happy where we are maybe i do trade up for one well, let's see what we got maybe maybe one one lineman so who's left willis don't know much about bennett don't know much about polk so i'm willing to go until willis is gone and then we trade up for polk and that's that's the draft for us or whatever we get in the sixth round so we trade a third a fifth 
two six and a seventh all you know combined between this and next year to move up with the jets to grab this lineman who is at a three but you just never know also i just thought about it. i completely forgot about running back highly doubt there's any left but let's take a look what about reggie cook seen a couple of decent ratings a oh i'm taking reggie cook oh i didn't cook That guy looked insane, though, no? Oh, well. I should have probably just waited, you know? Because there's a chance maybe that, that day three was like a fifth rounder or something, and I could have got him. But, yeah, I kind of was just like, yeah, I'm not going to trade up anymore. I don't think it's going to happen. And I probably should have just played it cool. And that would be the end of the draft. Not Some not-so-great picks, but a ton of good picks. A ton of them. I mean, the amount of talent that we grab that are going to be starting is astronomical. This was, oh my god. And the running back was good. He was good. Um, but yeah, this is easily the most amount of rookies starting from the beginning of the season that anyone's ever had on a team. Coakley, I mean, he's going to start for us uh, at free safety. So let's find out his dev. Superstar, that's a great start. Then we move on to the wide receivers. This would be the guy that you would obviously want as a superstar. Wide receivers, hard to develop. Great short, great release. Uh, great jumping, pretty damn good catching and all that. Uh, he looks like a pretty good receiver to me, where number six is maybe a little questionable. What's that dev? This would be the guy I would want to be superstar. Hmm, star dev, which, I mean, it's fair enough. Number two looks okay. Number 11, eh, it's whatever. It's okay. Uh, Williams, I think it's a left end we need, actually. Great block shed. Power move is as bad as advertised, but he is a good player when it comes to block shed. Number 91, dev. Another superstar. We're winning. We are doing well. Levy probably doesn't matter too much. These guys are like, you know, hidden dev. It doesn't really matter. They're starting no matter what. I think we need a left guard the most. Our center, you know, will allow Schmitz to continue to start. Star dev. It really wouldn't have mattered one way or another. I'm happy with the pick no matter what. Flanagan. Uh, he's all right. He's definitely all right. Not great at traits, but all right. Let's take a look at the dev. What number is he wearing? Number seven. Oof. And another superstar. This is actually, I would say, a top 10 draft we've had this Madden. Easily. Uh, 80, I think 84. I mean, I don't want to just get super predictable with every single number we do. And then Adkinson was actually a really high overall. I guess it doesn't really matter which way they're playing because left or right end. Very, very good finesse. I think it was right end now because technically we moved the other guy to... No. I don't remember. We'll, we'll fix it at some point. Star dev. He was fine. Great player, obviously. And left guard. Normal dev, but actually not bad. Felton, 74 overall. Going to be playing middle linebacker in the future for us. Very good block shed. Okay coverage. Insane excel, obviously. But we'll take a look at that dev. He's going to be a future middle linebacker. Maybe now. Who knows? Obviously, you never know because uh, Isaiah Simmons, he's, he's getting up there a little bit. Don't know if that progression is really that great. Cook, obviously, Irvin wasn't great, but he probably will start. Cook looks amazing, but injury and toughness a little low. Uh, we got ourselves our uh, Lightning Thunder, though. We definitely do. Uh, I guess if we're going to look around, it would be nice to see the tight end we were going to go for, and then the QBs. Uh, nice. Warmax, great. Left guard, 81 overall. Might be a generational. Uh, where was that tight end, though? Was he actually a first-round pick? Reynolds. Logan was the guy. 72 overall with Hidden Dev in fairness. Uh, yeah, very slow. Slower than I would have thought, actually. 4 six, seven is... Eh, I guess it makes sense. I guess that makes sense. Star dev. Wow, we dodged a bullet there. I was going to take him. We were kind of desperate. Quarterback. Pick two overall was a 73 overall. What's the dev? He is hidden. He's pretty good. A little bit better than maybe advertised. He was like B's and C's. Not going to go back to that route that I almost mentioned. And he is a superstar, so he would have been a good selection. There's no doubt about it. But as far as if I'm a betting man, oh my lord. What in the bust is going on here? But if I'm a betting man, I'm not betting on that guy. I'm just I'm just simply not. Wait, oh my lord, I just hit the same thing. Way too many negatives compared to the positives. And dev is cool and all, but at the end of the day, I can't just base my uh, whole scouting on, meh, he might be dev. Uh, of course, Banks not great either. Yeah, it was a bad draft class. Let's see the overalls on average. Wow, I mean, you have five guys that are 77 plus, the rest are 76 or lower. That is... Maybe the worst draft class to ever have pick one on, but in the end, we turned it into a ton and a ton of starters. Well, my mic was muted on accident, so I'm doing the uh, the team overhaul 
from uh, you know the, the season two start, middle of the season, and uh, some crazy things have happened. And those crazy things are well, none of this, but. The fact that Rakestraw is now a superstar, and of course, also, was it Atkinson? Was it Williams? One of them, I think it might have been Atkinson, got 10k XP for hitting the one of two on their camp standout. Was it him? Was it him? I think it was him. 10,000 XP, XP bonus. Boom. Boom! That's all I can say. Plus three to finesse, plus three to power move, and then of course, you know, we did have Rakestraw with that dev up. He just got it. Now an 80 overall superstar, kind of the best corner on the team now. Basically, kind of, in a way. Uh, I don't think you want to lose slot. I mean, it's rare to find a player build that is literally slot, because usually after a while, you know, it becomes main to main. But uh, we'll see how long that takes. Not terrible at all. And uh, Penix, we're having an okay season. I'm just hoping that he's either the guy or we find a new guy. That's all I can really ask for. Started the season off pretty well. Kind of a downfall since then. $30 million left. Uh, Evan Neal might get a contract. Obviously, Belton's going to get a contract, especially especially with the low price that he is uh, asking for. Special teamers, we'll see. But only 30 mil, despite having this bad of a team and being this filled with rookies, is kind of insane. I don't know where all that money is gone, but Dane Belton not asking for a whole lot is definitely going to save us a bit. Evan Neal. I mean, if I'm going to do a deal, it's going to be four years. Four year, 36. Boom. Wow. Really? Okay. Pretty iffy middle as well. I mean, I don't know what happens if we win. Maybe playoffs? Well, we wouldn't know because we are 8-9 to the rest of the division. 9-8, 9-8, 7-10 for the Cowboys. If there was ever a year to do it, this would have been the year. Obviously an improvement, but still far from complete. Look at all these L's. Four wins in a row, four losses in a row. We won one game, we lose two games. We win two games, we lose three games. We win one game, and then, of course, at 8-8, eight eight, we lose the final game. Unbelievably balanced season. We can never just, like, win all the way. Just have to lose a bunch after winning a bunch. It was just kind of annoying. Penix, 26 touchdowns, 9 interceptions, 3,700 yards with the Falcons playbook. Definitely better Irving is just, I don't, I don't know. Cook was four, four and a half, you know, 4.2 yards per carry, four touchdowns. Maybe he's the guy next season. Favors was pretty good. Maybe rookie of the year. Maybe a dev up from that. Neighbors, not bad. Waller, improved. Hyatt, we don't talk about. O-line, uh, love seeing, you know, 90 plus overall left tackle who's a franchise tackle, giving up 11 sacks. It's fun. Thibodeau, 12 and a half. Six for Burns, five for Atkinson, four and a half for Lawrence. I mean, some okay numbers there. Some picks on top of it. Coakley maybe goes to... X Factor, if you won Rookie of the Year. I don't think that's how that goes, actually. You can only get to Superstar with uh, award dev ups. Riley Patterson only missing one kick out of 17, so he deserves the contract. Man, not going to happen. Might have actually won some awards. Well, let's take a look. Let's take a look if we have any Rookie Awards. Lamar Jackson wins another MVP in real life. I don't even remember who was MVP last season. Might have even been him, uh, which would have been like three in a row, technically. Uh, Aiden Hutchinson. What damn team were we rebuilding? Almost forgot. We got Rookie of the Year on offense, Rookie of the Year on defense. We love to see that. Beautiful stuff. No for QB, no for running back. Wide receiver, uh, number 10, just barely making the list. Six for Kelly, who wasn't even really a starter, so it doesn't really count. D-line, no. Linebacker, number one. Not bad. Some XP and probably, hopefully, a dev up. Uh, and then the rest, you know, not a whole lot going. Oh, we got Kicker of the Year, actually. Didn't even notice that, because I was expecting it, you know... You miss one field goal, it's almost like you guarantee yourself to not win kicker of the year. But this time, it actually was still good enough. Fair enough. We actually, you know, kind of closed out with some awards. Three of them. Not bad. Four of them, actually. Both Rookie of the Year awards. Totally forgot about that. Not half bad. We actually did pretty good. Did pretty well for ourselves. Of course, the Bills versus the Eagles. The Eagles with a chance to win back-to-back -back Super Bowls here in this rebuild setting. With the winner... I said the winner being the Eagles back-to-back -back years. Okay, that's super fun to watch, obviously. Let's take, especially our division rival. Let's take a look at the dev ups. Favors goes the superstar. Waller goes the superstar, but I don't think that's going to be enough for him. I don't even know if he needs a contract or what's the story, but uh, 33 years old now, and I don't even think the regression hit. It did hit, but still, I need to start Flanagan, I think. No dev up for Penix. Got to be looking for quarterback still. Defensively, dev ups for Williams. Dev ups for... Also, Williams? Atkinson? Or one of these guys was already superstar, weren't they? I think it might have been Williams. I don't even know. But Atkinson, I think, with the Rookie of the Year award win, gets his dev up. This is a squad. This is a solid squad, especially on defense. 
they are moving. They are making plays. Wait, I totally forgot we didn't even finish the Evan Neal contract negotiations. Uh, Banks will just pay two year seventeen for Neal. I mean, I don't know what he wants. He wants a big uh, market, uh, no income tax, and he wants the scheme fit. Four year forty, ten mil per year. I think that's fair. I think that's fair for both sides. Uh, and then we do want to keep Riley Patterson if possible. I'll give him a three-year deal. Usually these are actually four-year deals, aren't they? Four-year 16, and we're broke again. 14 mil, I'm not sure where we're going to save by, uh, you know, getting rid of some of these players. Hopefully, you know, you get rid of uh, the quarterback, Daniel Jones, at some point, I hope. Uh, that's the move. I even wonder if that is doable now. So in 2025, which this is the year it would be, right? 2025, it would be a 22 million dead hit with a 42 million uh, cap hit. So absolutely, wait, it's a four-year, I'm so confused. So we, we could just literally keep him one more year. I guess the total salary doesn't matter. Uh, either way, realistic move in this scenario, even though, you know, Penix has been great, would obviously be to release Daniel Jones. I mean, it's, it's a big hit for the cap hit. And releasing that 22 million is saving us, in theory, 20 extra million because that's how it works in real life he is he would be on a 40 mil hit or something like that with like 22 mil dead they would definitely be taking that right like they would definitely be trying to save the money now and uh you take that dead hit which is spread over two years who cares uh but i will be great not gonna pay him though because i don't even think he'd be a free agent Debo, great not ready for him and we don't need him anyways we got wide receivers safeties don't really need that i mean we could use a center we could use a guard those types of positions uh you know quarterback for sure but a lot of positions we're looking for you're just not gonna find sam howell's interesting but how do i pay a guy that i've never seen play 34 million dollars per year over what five he's not bad though that's the thing that's really intriguing me but i would probably rather just reset through the draft honestly he's really not bad though like he really isn't if i could do like a, a two-year deal worth like 70 would they take that very uh, anti-commanders, if you will. Uh, but then again, Penick, nah, Penick showed promise. So you either draft a quarterback and then let him duke it out, or you just stick with Penix another season. Then you're like, okay, it's new QB time. Because uh, Penix was actually pretty good, like I said. Zach Tom could play guard. A lot of expense, though. I'd probably rather go to the draft for that position as well. Corey Lindsley, I mean, a one-year deal for a guy that is good. But uh, for one, I don't even think he's... Is he retiring in real life, actually? I don't think he's playing another two seasons plus. Um, yeah, I think we're 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 chilling. I don't think we need to sign anybody here. I think we're fine. I don't know what Isaiah Simmons' contract is at this point, but I will be trading him off. I think if he's still here, which I don't even know if he is. Not sure what you get off of him, but in the user league, probably like ten first round picks. In Madden, I don't know, maybe like a fifth round. All right, so we enter the draft with pick number 12 overall. This is not really a good draft in general. Luckily, we don't really need much, but I might be trading up for Styles. I know you're probably thinking Herman is the guy, but I believe he is 23. You know what? Is this the year I say F the 23s and just grab who I want? Thurston probably looks like the best, and he's young. The problem with Thurston is, though, two to three talent grade. Do I trust that? I think this really comes down to who goes when and how high that is. Uh, I don't like the draft class at all, but realistically, all we need is quarterback and one offensive lineman. I also ended up giving uh, Kevin Dotson, I believe, on a two-year 16. I know in real life he signed, I think it was a three-year big deal, but this is the third year, so I'd make the argument that, you know, they uh, they just released him because they couldn't afford him. Oh, my God. Pick four and five. I really thought we were in the nobody-needs-quarterback phase anymore, but... Apparently not. Is Styles really that guy, though? 22 years old. Elite throw power. Not the fastest. I kind of like that. I like that he's not that fast. Do I really trade up for that? And who needs QB? I think the Jets, actually, ironically enough, do need QB. Are they going to take one, too? No. The Cardinals? No. The Falcons probably do need QB. No. Panthers don't. Chiefs definitely don't. The Cowboys probably don't. Bengals definitely don't. And we have our quarterback, if we want him, also pick 15 from our trade down. Uh, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. I like Thurston more. I think he's the safer bet, even though he's a 2-3. Two 2-3 to three. Two to three versus 1-2. to two. We see the ratings. We aren't blind. I think talent grade 100% is factual. I really do think that his overall is going to be low, but that doesn't change the fact that he could be hidden. This is risky, but I'm taking Scott Thurston. And he's hidden, Deb. I don't want to hear it. And also, wasn't he faster than this? 
No? Okay. Who cares? All right, we cooked. I'm curious to see what the other quarterbacks were like, but I was never trading up to four or five for those guys. They looked terrible. The first guy was, all right, I guess, all right, but no, no, no. Everyone else, no, no, no. Offensive line is the biggest need. I have some other guys later, and that's probably the route we're going to go. A little bit of a trade down. Who would have thought? Trading down in a rebuild never happens. Never once has it happened. Although, could we just, like, take... Oh, nope. I was about to say, can we not just take Brown and just be happy with it? Nope. Connor Young looks great, so why overpay for a player? Oh, maybe David Hill. Maybe Brian Burns isn't the guy for the future. I don't freaking know. He's not really playing that well. Let's move back seven spots and then grab Hill for depth if he's there. Screw it. We're keeping the, uh, the gravy train alive. A first and a third next year from the Bills to move up 16 spots. I am absolutely down, and they grab a tight end. He does look good, but once again, no way. We could have had him there at 30. 30? I just moved because I was like, eh, we're probably not going to get him. It's too late. Um, Booth also looks pretty good as a wide receiver. Brown is still there. I might take Brown anyways because we could use multiple linemen. Who couldn't? Brown does look kind of good. Screw it. We're going to take the value of Brown, I think. Darren Brown is going to be my choice. 22, 6, 5. Hidden dev. And also the underrated aspect of having the fifth-year option. I mean, th that is a factual thing. Marquise Booth could use a wide receiver. He looks okay. Kind of just saw that those ratings, you know, wide receivers are usually pretty, like, hidden about how good they are. It's very hard to find that out, that information. But, you know, he, he had some okay ratings. Uh, linebacker is definitely an option. Might even take that. Uh, but realistically, there's not really a positional need here. Do I not just take... Like, Booth just because. This Perriman's 6'3". I'm not really sure what I'm going to get with 6'3". Um, quarterback, eh. Instead, we shall head to basically the third round. Moving back yet again to the Raiders. A lot of trade downs, but I got to admit, a lot of mid. The drafts have been pretty mid. I got to be honest with you. They've been pretty awful. Uh, there's not a whole lot of offensive linemen actually left. Obviously, I want our center... But I argue if I'm going to go for two players, why not grab the other center as well? Ah, he's kind of stuck at playing center, speaking of, with his size. Connor Young's our guy. And Dev, kind of seen it all the way. Then we go to the next user pick. I don't know what the value is, but there's got to be like a DT or a linebacker here somewhere. Uh, we do have a left end with B Finesse. He's interesting. 22. A little bit of speed. Might be hidden. I'm not sure. Tatum's okay. McCullough looks good. Daniel looks better. I don't really need DT, and I, I mean, I guess McDaniel's a little bit needed more as we could use a linebacker in the next year or two, whereas DT, D-line, it's probably not for another, like, four or five at minimum. So I'm going to take Jaden McDaniels, who's also hidden. Okay, didn't really help ourselves too much, but I suppose with the quarterback is a really good pick, but a lot of hidden devs no matter what. You know, even if it's positions we didn't really necessarily need, uh, you know, not bad. Also, a UDFA day three, nah. And we're going to move on with a third, uh, two years from now, and a seventh next year. Kind of an L for us, but it's the Vikings. They could still suck by then, and more importantly, I don't have anything to draft. I really don't. So we're going to be doing a lot more trade downs, and uh, there's that. Seventh round. Is it a punter we need? I'm going to look for a punter. Elite kick Harris, Dan Harris. Uh, elite kick power, Dan Harris. Uh, good speed and really good hip uh, kick power. So punter of the future, I suppose. And we move on to the draft recap. Gotta say, like I said, I think Thurston's going to be a lower overall. But at the end of the day, he's hidden, and that's all that really matters to me. Uh, let's see it. He's going to be automatic starter, I think, as Penix. Ooh, the guard is really good, but I think uh, Penix, he's just, his ceiling's just not going to be great. Thurston, 72 overall. What are those accuracies looking like, though? He's very good. What's the dev? Can we get ourselves a superstar plus quarterback that is a rookie? Can we? We could, but we aren't going to. Uh, Darren Brown, who looks... Kind of ridiculous. Uh, is he a generational? Probably not. But could he be superstar just by chance? Maybe. And he is not. So definitely not generational. But still a great player. Uh, and then the rest, center, Connor Young. I don't know if we have a starting spot for him. Because like I said, I got Dotson. So maybe a future right tackle, perhaps. We'll see. Connor Young. Boom. And then the final player, the linebacker, if you will. And even if you will, it's just, he's just a linebacker. No zone coverage, uh, but really good block shot. Let's take a look at the dev. Very iffy in coverage of these linebackers. Star dev. Not a bad draft, though. Especially since we added a first and a third and, like, a bunch of other stuff for next year. 
Trying to play the uh, the bear's angle, if you will. That's an accurate, if you will, uh, usage. How good was Penix last year, though? Because like, he wasn't that bad, was he? Yeah, 26-9, 3,700 yards. I mean, I don't know what to think. Because Thurston is basically, you know, pretty close to as good as him for a lot of different ratings, yet four years younger with actual dev and the chance to be a Rookie of the Year winner. Also, John Runyon's uh, contract in the final year of his contract is projected to be like an 11 mil hit with a 2 mil dead hit. So, I mean, I don't want to go out spoiling things for you, foreshadowing, reaching into the future. But, uh, yeah, I don't expect him to be playing that third season of his contract. But you never know. You just never know. But for me, he will not be doing that. Also, I completely did this wrong. It needs to be a 2.5 mil dead hit. Whoops. Here is the squad for Season 3. We're going to be rocking a new running back as well, as Cook had a way better yards per carry as the backup. And with the better speed, I'm kind of thinking maybe that is a bigger... Like, trucking and speed might be better than just straight-up elusiveness. It's probably just the fact that he's low overall. Him being Irving, of course. Uh, but looking at the O-line, I mean, definitely not the best we've ever done. But uh, we've got potential, and I think we're using him at just a good enough time. You know, Thurston maybe wins Rookie of the Year... Flanagan, obviously, 74 overall superstar, maybe an 80 overall by the end of the year. Uh, linebackers hoping Felton could be that guy. Edge should be fine. Uh, Thibodeau had a great year. Maybe Burns can follow suit. Uh, corners are great. I mean, this is a good team. A lot of really high devs. Some of our highest devs from the ground up that we've ever had, right? One, two, uh, what else do we have? One, two, th three, four, five, six players that did not start with superstar dev or developed that way, uh, which is really impressive. Not the best season. Thibodeau signing for sure. Deontay for sure. Simmons unlikely. Uh, Okereke, if we can get him on a one year, which I think he will accept, uh, we'll do that and maybe Hyatt. But outside of that, I think everyone else will be let go, which is fine because we have a lot of money to pay all the guys we need to pay. Oh, look at this. Reggie Cook cooked. Star dev with 10k XP for the normal dev running back. If we win, we might be in. If we lose, definitely not. And we lose, we go 8 and 9 again. What is it going to take? Obviously, we have a pretty young team still, and they're not the best of overalls, but what is it genuinely going to take? Is it just the division's too good? Because I mean, you got the commanders who are cooking, but like the Titans, not even in the division, but just in general, the Titans are the ones. They're the ones that send us packing, basically. Pretty unfortunate. Uh, Scott Thurston, was that good enough for Rookie of the Year? Maybe. Maybe. Depends on how weak it was. Uh, you know, Cook's first season was definitely a lot better than both of Irving's seasons that he started. And the backup season for Irving was worse. So, Cook, definitely a better ceiling, in my opinion. Flanagan, uh, we ran the Falcons playbook all season long, except for the last two games. I really wanted that win, uh, you know, to get to the playoffs. So, I put on the Chiefs. Cooked, could, you should be, superstar. Neighbors, though. Ugh. What is that? Uh, you know, a lot of, like, really low yards per catch numbers. So that Falcon scheme does seem to be very possession-y, if you will. And then you have Brian Burns and uh, Thibodeau flipping sides for sacks. Atkinson was amazing, though. Lawrence is pretty good. And then where was Williams? Who freaking knows? Uh, three total interceptions on the season. That is lovely. Five missed kicks out of 19. Lovely. Punter under 50. Lovely. God, we suck. We genuinely suck. Drake May is the MVP of the league. Uh, offensive Rookie of the Year does not go to our guy. It goes to Abrams, so kind of a wasted season, it feels like. Any awards at all? Brian Burns, so maybe maybe X Factor for Lucky. That's literally the only positive this whole season. Sweet. And it's a Super Bowl between the Bills and the Commanders. We're an 86 overall. It would be kind of crazy how much higher we'd be if we actually made the playoffs. Uh, Flanagan does go to X Factor. Not really a surprise for anyone. Gets 80 overall, just like we suspected he would. Cook at an 82 is decent. Burns gets the X Factor, which is amazing. And Belton to a superstar. All right. We like to see that. Not a bad dev up from him. Not really sure what did it. Tackles, maybe. Uh, but then Burns, X Factor, that is clutch. Because he is obviously not the youngest man in the world. 28's not old, but it's definitely not young when you look at, you know, regression points and progression points. Uh, so uh, we'll definitely take that. Any dev up is a win, especially, you know, the older the player gets, obviously. Not a huge fan of, you know, the direction of the quarterback, though. You know, not a great season. Obviously, he was a low overall. Obviously, he was a rookie. But, you know, we're entering year four, and the best we've done so far is eight and nine. You know, that's not the best we've seen.
And with the Commanders winning, does that mean that all three Super Bowls played so far have been from the NFC East? What are genuinely the odds? We never, and I mean never, see that. Even from the AFC West, we don't see that. And with the Chiefs, like, making the playoffs every damn season, you know, like, we never see this. And if it was going to be, it would be the Cowboys. And I think at least two of, maybe all three seasons, they didn't even make the playoffs. The last two seasons, they didn't. So I don't know what's happening in this rebuild, but things are getting wild in the NFC East. Fifth-year option for neighbors, I don't know if that really helps us. But I'm going to click it because he has, like, low interest. So I figure if I wait another season, maybe by then the interest will be higher. Maybe, like, he wants, you know, a mentor at, at wide receiver or a franchise quarterback or something like that. Better chance to get that a year later than right now because right now we don't have any of that. And obviously you've seen some of the other guys like Waller or Singletary, but we don't need them. We just we just simply don't. All right, looking at the top 100, there are some names. There definitely are some names. O-line would not hurt us one bit. I would love to get a brand new offensive lineman, but... Even though we have a lot of money, I just don't know if I see the value. Do I grab a Derrick Henry even though Cook has he has direction? Uh, I don't want to ruin him, but at the same time, I would love a little shortcut. A little shortcut here and there definitely does not hurt my feelings. Henry in 89 overall would be better than anything we've seen since freaking Saquon Barkley, which we haven't had this rebuild, obviously, because they kind of got rid of him. But, uh, yeah, I mean, there's some names here, but I don't think they make sense for us other than maybe Henry, but... Like I said, Cook wasn't bad, and 82 overall. Give him one more season, maybe he's an 86, 87. All right, we have pick 11, uh, you know, slightly better than last year, right? What did we have last year? 12, 13? I don't even know. But there is a couple of quarterbacks, one of them being George Floyd. Yes, uh, George Floyd is the quarterback, uh, potentially, of your dreams. Top five with a round one talent and grade. Don't know what teams need a quarterback. We don't really need a quarterback, but at the same time, we don't really need anything else. Would you call this a, ironically enough, Josh Rosen type of move? Maybe. I don't know when Floyd... Well, there goes Floyd. Never mind. Forget anything I've said. Thurston, we never doubted you one bit. You were never going to be benched for anyone. Oh, Weary, who's this? Evan Weary, 6'5", 21, very fast. Do we grab him just for... Pure, don't need anything else. I mean, at this point, we have a lower overall team. I can admit that. But as far as pure need goes, I don't have many of those. We don't have many pure needs on this team. And realistically, like, what's the best value? You know, I I'm not really sure. Do I grab a tight end? Probably not. But I just don't have any need for players that are going to be starters. I have McCord on my list. I have Lowry on my list, who's a six foot five dude. Uh, 21 years old. He's actually very fast for a six foot five dude on top of it. So I'm not even sure what kind of value I'm getting out of getting a guy like Corey Burns, who would only be our third corner anyways. There's just not a whole lot I need. I really don't know what I'm going to do. I guess I just take pure value, even though we don't need anybody. Corey Burns, why not? Hindev, 91 speed, 93 excel. Move on to the next pick, which is 31 in the first round at Bill's trade. I mean, you kind of expected it was going to be bad, but you know, I'm not really too worried about it. Spears, running back. Do I grab a running back? Like I said, at this point, I just don't have a lot of needs. Spears is pretty good value, I think. He's actually solid looking. Two to three. He's around a one to two. Might still grab that six five corner anyway. Safety. I mean, it's kind of a need. 22 with 445 speed. Actually, not bad. And then Paul Adkins, who is 446. Spears looks pretty good. I can't lie. He's got some catching. 21 years old. I'm going to take Spears. I really regret that. And despite grabbing that corner, we're also going to grab another corner. Lionel Lowry, the six foot five guy who is hidden dev. I've seen a lot of superstars or normals. It feels like they're never star. It's superstar, normal, six foot five corners. Usually they're a bit slower than that, though. Like 88 speed, 89 excel, you know, speed ish range. Uh, didn't I have a wide receiver? Well, if I did, he's gone. Uh, offensive line, there's not a lot going on here. So, I mean, if we're going to go for one, it's going to be one of these two guys. And I have actually had more luck with the day three. So that's what I'm going to do. And boom. And I think even though we don't know much about him, he's at least a C finesse. Six one. He's okay. Alex Richard's going to be my guy. Normal dev. Wow. He sucks. And then we have another pick, bro. I just don't need any of you. Leave me alone. Okay, I'll take Hamilton. Why not? Day three. Bunch of Bs. Normal dev. Sweet. 
Traded two, uh, three-fourths to the Panthers for a second-round pick. You can argue, oh, it's not realistic. Only because most teams wouldn't do it, but as far as pure value goes, if you had, you know, some players in the fourth round you really wanted, the value is there. It's just, you know, most teams would not be giving up a second-round player for a bunch of fourths, unless you're me. And we're going to take this 23-year-old tight end, Doug Schultz. Looks okay, actually. 84 speed, 86 XL with that size is not bad, especially since it's a fifth-rounder. And I found a random guy that I just didn't even look at at all. I seen he was 6'5", I seen he was 244, I seen he was 22, I said I'm clicking him, he's hitting dev, I don't know what to tell you. Do I expect him to be terrible? Oh, absolutely, but it doesn't matter, he's hitting development trait, could develop behind uh, the two edge rushers that we have that are already elite. Uh, 85 overall, I would love to see what George Floyd's overall is. But, uh, wow, okay, so Spears is normal, but he's a 78 overall, and then Burns was also a 78 overall. The DB draft, we just didn't need anything, and I just took best available at positions that could maybe need a replacement in the future. I don't know. I think this was an insanely luxury draft for a team that just hasn't made the playoffs, and he's a superstar. It really doesn't make a lot of sense, you know, when you really think about it, but that's just the way the team is built right now. 93 juke move with 91 change of direction. He's insanely good at juke ability, but he's just a backup. He really is. Lionel Lowry, I expect this guy to be a superstar. Very good man. Very good press. And, of course, the zone is terrible, but that's usually how those types of builds go. Almost guaranteed to be superstar. And he is. I don't know what it is. Six, uh... I wonder, does he have any, like, offensive traits? Like, imagine he could play wide receiver. Didn't actually notice his, like, catching or anything like that. Uh, so run block is 27. That's already a really bad indicator. 9-1 jump, obviously. And, no, you cannot. And then we got some other players, like O-line and whatnot. Let's take a look at this, uh, Mabin guy. Bobby Mabin, 71 finesse move, could definitely work with that. Will we? Absolutely not, but we could. And his dev is star. But obviously we need to see the Saints, George Floyd, the 75 overall. Oh, wow, okay. We dodge a bullet. I would have potentially traded up for him. But never mind, we saved ourselves from marriage. Oh, weary, nah, 79 overall. The Buccaneers didn't get much of Gronk. They're like, we want another. Not really, but you know. He's not bad by any means. 79 overall could be a generational. Let's see if he is. We're an 85. Why not? And I think he is. I would I would assume, based on overall dev, I think that's a, a pretty safe assessment. I don't know if he actually is. Oh, wow. We took the second and third highest uh, overalls tied at 78 as well, which is, I mean, kind of impressive, right? I mean, it's something. And then Lowry's up there, top 10. So I'm not sure why the Panthers did get rid of Bryce Young, but they did, and that is factual. So we're going to be trading him over to the Panthers for a uh, trade they offered, Rashad Bateman, and a third-round pick. Uh, Rashad Bateman is really just a number three wide receiver for us, which is A-OK, -okay, you know? I'm absolutely okay with that. That is a fair enough trade, plus the third-rounder for us. I was probably going to ask for a third-rounder anyway, so adding Bateman, who may have been a free agent signer for them anyways... To the, to the mix. I like the value. This is squad for season four. I'm hoping to glow up for Thurston is on the way. Same with Cook. Wide receiver one is great. Wide receiver two is decent. Tight end is going to be on his way to being great. O-line, got a couple of decent players, right? The left guard's great. Uh, left tackle's decent. Right guard's pretty good. And center's on his way. Right tackle, I don't know about Neil at this point. He's never developed for me, like ever. It's those six, seven, like star dev tight ends. They just never, or tackles, they never develop for me. Uh, Dane Bellin, please don't be 26. Oh, I just said what I said, Dane. That is a little bit of an L, I can't lie. But edge is great, linebackers are decent. Uh, safeties are decent, corners are really good, interior is amazing. Another mid-season so far, despite the fact that we're actually running the Chiefs playbook. It's kind of getting frustrating, I can't lie. Um, but two years 61 for Dexter, maybe could have done more years, but the money was kind of expensive. Uh, Rake Straw, the value is there, so we're going to do a 6-year 45, which is amazing value for us. Irving, not bad, but we have a backup already. O-line, I think we can do better for cheaper. I think, you know what, I'm going to keep him on a 1-year 12.5, 12.6, whatever. We got the money for it, and he's a pretty good overall. Uh, and then pretty much everyone else is a backup anyway, so we're actually chilling. And, you know, future contracts-wise, we don't have anyone to go for at this moment, so we're in a good spot. Please let us have the win! Please! Yes! We're in the playoffs at 10 and 7. Thurston, the number one quarterback for yards. I genuinely just can't believe that EA still has playbooks this heavily influencing wins. Uh, I mean, you could see a 3 and 6 star. We ran the Chiefs playbook the whole way, though, but lost the fi second to final game. 
and uh, ultimately was good enough. Obviously, a 10-7 and with the Chiefs playbook on offense. Raiders on defense. So the AFC West is coming in clutch for us. Thurston. I mean, from, you know, average, maybe below average, to one of the best in the league because of a scheme is just funny. Cook did improve his yards per carry, which is all that matters. Let him cook. Favors was great. Neighbors was great. Flanagan was great. Bateman wasn't too bad. Offensive line. He said nine sacks for a center is a lot of sacks to give up. That's all I'll say there. Sack totals, not great for the edge. Uh, Atkinson was great, though. Lawrence, pretty damn good. Williams, better. Uh, Okereke, Burns, and Belton combined for eight uh, interceptions, and then four for the rest of these guys. Uh, looking at uh, kicker, missed four kicks out of 16. Patterson is just selling. Harris, way better season two, and no kicker punt return game to note. Uh, Thurston, number four for MVP, number one for Mahomes. Olave with the Offensive Player of the Year award. DeMar DeMarcus Lawrence for the Defensive Player of the Year award. Floyd, Offensive Rookie of the Year. Defensive Rookie of the Year is the Burns. Fair enough. Uh, best QB, number two, so that's Pro Bowl. Dev up, obviously. Uh, and, yeah, we actually have something to be proud of, especially a playoff berth. We're actually in the playoffs. And with that being said, any single person can win. And, of course, the Bills, who have been in a billion Super Bowls now, move on to the next round. Will it matter for us, though? As the Commanders are up 7-0, we can do nothing. I still can't believe the Cowboys have been this bad in this rebuild, though. And we just suck! Finally, some points! Oh, my God! 14-14, 14-21. I mean, the Commanders are smoking, and they shouldn't be. Field goal of 4th and 2 is definitely a decision. And with the co Commanders being the greatest team of all time, we will lose. Wow, EA, you guys are killing it. You guys are really killing it out there. Of course, Drake May is decent, but Thurston got smoked on. Gotta love those yards per carry. 10 for 13. Beautiful. Well, we made the playoffs, but insanely short-lived. Can we do anything in the fifth season? Final season. Add that. Chiefs versus the Commanders. Is it going to actually be all NFC East? There's no shot. There's no way. Okay, the Chiefs do win. Ending the NFC East streak... Of Super Bowl wins, which is just an insane thing to be able to say. Uh, favors to X Factor. Thurston to Superstar. No dev up for Cook, unfortunately, but, I mean, he did well. 82 overall for Thurston. Should be, uh, you know, on par for an 88 overall by the end of next season. So, definitely a, a chance to win it all. Uh, let's take a look at the defense. Any dev ups? Uh, Felton, I believe. Felton is a dev up man, if I'm not mistaken. Which we love to see. Boom, superstar. Was Burns already superstar? Whether he is or not, we have three superstar corners, two superstar safeties. It's all that matters. This team should be better, but not making the playoffs ever, basically, and not winning playoff games has hindered its development tenfold. See, we got any re-signings to do. I'm pretty sure we took care of everything outside of Coakley's potential fifth-year option. Which I do not think we're going to be taking. I'd rather just resign him for cheaper in the long run. Fifty-seven million dollars, so we have a lot of money anyways. Fifth-year option's great, but the value I just don't think is there. Bur uh, Bucky Irvin, he's actually interested in resigning now, but we're still not going to go for him. And that's really it. Let's head on to free agency for the final season. Could splurge if we see a position we think is super valuable. I'm trying to think of what position that could really be. Maybe an offensive lineman because Evan Eel's just been so mid it hurts. I guess that would be my thought. Uh, Travis Kelsey's great. Um, Landon Dickerson, $20 million per, but it is only two years, so could maybe make that play. See, uh, Cooper's great, but don't really need him. Actually, I don't know if that's true because uh, Okereke is definitely on the older side. We'll have to take a look at Okereke, but outside of maybe Landon Dickerson, which I don't even think he's the best built for a tackle spot. There's not really a name here for us at the positions we need. A low, I mean, I wouldn't even call it low ball, but I'll just offer that. And if we get him, we get him. And I will wait because I want to see if we need a, a Cooper. Not that Cooper. Wrong Cooper. Because uh, our linebacker situation might be uh, dwindled. We have pick 20. And, I mean, there's a couple of decent needs. Like I said, Brian Burns, I'm not really sure what's going to go on there. But, uh couple of decent players here like these two players look pretty good but I'm not going to get them but we do have a chance at a guy like Mr. Najee Peters who could be the future of the edge rush position 6'4 not the fastest 
but an A power move, an A block shift, an A awareness, B play rec, B tackle. I scouted him further because he was like one of the only like one of twos that looked great, you know, or had a potential to look great. I mean, like B there, B there, B there, B there. Like it's just so much crap on the edge position. So I might even trade up because I you just never know. Like one to two could easily be fifteen. So with the amount of extra draft picks we have, I'm probably gonna go to like. 15 and maybe trade up 15 is just like the magic spot i think all right we traded uh 20 a fourth round this a sixth round this and a seventh round nick this to move up five spots of the jaguars which is going to be the edge rusher i believe might have also had some other player i know we had a wide receiver but i don't know if i'm actually going to go with them but this selection is uh, i oh tiller tiller's still there okay wait a minute hold on four six nine uh i know less i'll be honest so I'm going to have to go with Peters. Najee Peters, that's my guy. Please don't be normal. Nice. Pure value-wise, we're going to go with another edge rusher, Antoine Hartwell, who is at least hidden dev. So we do land a hidden development trait, edge rusher, and then I pick 20. I mean, it is what it is. I don't really have a need to grab anyone. If someone's... Oh, I should have went for house, actually. Oh, I should have went for house. I sold... Oh, he's here. He's here. Dion House. He looked pretty good, and that's why I'm saying he sold. Or I sold, but he's there. Dion House. Oh, what a pick. Oh, what a pick. Him still being there is kind of crazy. I am a little surprised. I will not lie. And there are some decent linebackers, like Joe Claxton looks great. But I think probably need a, a lineman more. Carpenter, I don't know if he's really this, uh, the guy I need. Denzel Love, maybe? We move up 10 spots using a 5th and a 6th this year, which we still have another 3rd round pick, which is great because kind of wanted that. Uh, it's a really fast wide receiver a little bit later on. Could also maybe go for one of the linebackers like Claxton, but Denzel Love is going to be my choice here. 21 years old, which is great for future proofing, and he's hidden dev with 90 strength. Definitely a potential tackle player. Uh, linebacker, I mean, we're not going to use them right now anyway, so if there's a linebacker still there that I like, I'll take him. If not... I might reach for this speedy wide receiver. Oh, Claxon's there. Joe Claxon's my guy. 21, 6 3. Pretty damn athletic. Oh, the sell. And for my final trick, I shall make all of our next year picks disappear. This trade up, though, I believe is going to be. Oop, wrong team. Imagine they would have taken our guy. For the speedy wide receiver, I mean, I don't know if he's going to be one of the superstar types, but could be. Very good release, very good uh, deep route with all of those in, you know, athletic uh, ratings. Is he? Oh, he's not, but he is a goon. Can't wait to see that Tiller was a superstar plus. It'd be so awesome. But let's take a look. We landed two at Drushers. Once again, didn't really need anything. Even safety was future-proofing the position. We didn't really need a future-proof yet. Kelly, we can trade her, uh, him off. I, I heard the name Kelly, and I was like, that's a girl. Uh, new offensive line. Who this? That makes no sense. Why would they make that trade? That is just so stupid. I mean, I guess I can take that fourth and a fifth. Not realistic there either. We're kind of getting more value than we should, but I'm going to take it anyways. I could use all the wide receiver depth I can get. Boom. Thank you, Lions. Appreciate it. Fourth and a fifth with him. I would have just taken the fourth and a fifth on its own regardless. But draft recap, what kind of overalls did we land? Maybe a uh, high overall, 74, 72, 75, 73, 74, 73. Obviously, we need to look at Tiller. There is no question about it. Tiller is the guy we need to look at. Tiller, 76 overall. Oh, nice. We did well. 81 finesse move, hidden dev. Can't wait to find out what this dev is. Oh, yeah, that's cool. I like that. 89 overall off the rip. To compare that, the Buffalo Bills, who have been in the Super Bowl many times now, are an 86, which is not bad either. But we're three overalls higher than them without, like, wins or anything like that, which is pretty damn impressive. Uh, of course, Thurston's the 83 overall, which is great, or he will be. Young is going to be starting right tackles. He's, like, basically the same as Evan Neal, but actually has a, you know, a, a ceiling that can be reached much higher. Uh, and then, you know, really, the defense looks great, but Williams has definitely struggled to develop. He's been pretty high dev for a while, but that block shed, no power move, no, you know, finesse, has really hurt his ability to overall, uh, you know, dev up, I think. Uh, but obviously an amazing team. Eric Armstead was an X-Factor, saw him there. Normally I go with the mentor, which he's old enough to be a mentor, but doesn't actually have the tag. But I wanted some actual pure talent this time, and that's kind of what we got. It's Thurston... 
Deep accuracy, so strong arm is definitely the bet. And we'll see what he gets there. He's a really good overall, though. One of the one to throw under pressure. It's not bad. Would have loved to see a little bit more to the throw deep, but still 83 overall quarterback. Basically a 90 overall team. At least win a couple of playoff games. Get to the Super Bowl, that'd be great, but we'll see what we're capable of. Oh, we're having a really good season. We are absolutely having a really good season. We got to pay the wide receivers, which we can afford all of them. The tight end we can afford. The left end we can afford. Uh, Brian Burns we could afford, but do we want to? Coakley we could definitely afford. Uh, Felton we definitely should and can afford. Uh, Williams is a question mark. We'll have to look at. Reggie Cook, obviously you pay. Levy, you maybe pay. There's a lot of names, though. Uh, but I think we're fine. I think we are absolutely fine. Uh, and it's just the next season with Thurston. That's really where, where things get a little bit tricky. But let's see how much money we have left over after $129 million is paid out. Yeah, we really can't afford Burns, I don't think, uh, which sucks because he's a great player, but uh, $27 million doesn't even factor in Williams, doesn't factor in Bateman, doesn't factor in Dotson, doesn't factor in Akarake, and then you have to pay the quarterback and then the left guard, who we, I mean, if that's the fifth-year option, I'm obviously taking it because we can't afford him any further anyways. But, uh, yeah, our money is low, so I think you lose Burns. This is definitely the window. You know, sometimes I feel bad. I'm like, oh, well, I mean, to be fair, we're having a great season. So maybe it's our year anyways. But I feel bad when we do a five-year cutoff. It's like, well, if we just did one more year, you know. But no, this is going to be uh, the best window. This is our strongest team without a singular doubt. So while it definitely sometimes does feel like, you know, five years isn't enough, at the same time, a lot of times you just run out of money. And if we lose this, we, I believe, have choked an opportunity and a half. Which we do. Oh, my. We still do take the division, actually. So, I guess it didn't really matter for the division. But, okay, we didn't choke it. The Panthers cooked at 15-2. and two. Uh, But we lost the final two games. Maybe even more than that. And, I mean, the, the bye week was absolutely still on the line. It's just, I thought we actually lost the division and everything. But, no, it's just the, the way things go. Lost the last two against the Cowboys and the Browns. And the Commanders earlier in the year. Fair enough. Can't win them all. Uh, but a very good, you know, season. Same scheme as last year, so it might have just been, you know, better team this year, I suppose. But uh, Thurston, maybe actually won MVP, just under 5,000 yards. 44 touchdowns, 8 interceptions, ridiculous. Cook, let him cook, could actually be a superstar. And he's not even quite a 90 overall yet. Very impressed with him there. Favors was great. Flanagan was amazing. Uh, Neighbors was decent enough. Bateman was pretty good, considering he run out of targets, right? Right tackle, Young was amazing compared to uh, Neal and then Thomas still giving up double-digit sacks as, like, the best left tackle in the league. Lawrence, really good. Thibodeau, really good. Burns, not bad. Atkinson, pretty good. Uh, interceptions, tame. Patterson only missed one out of 15, which is great. Harris, pretty damn good again. Kick return, punt return game, no touchdowns, but that's fine. That's pretty expected. MVP, not even in the top three again. What are these teams doing? I genuinely don't get it. And every time I check, it actually is legit. So I, I really don't... There's no point in looking, but it just feels like we deserve it and we never actually win it. Best QB number three, at least. Cook at number two. Should be a dev up, I'm assuming. Favors at three. O-line at five. D-line at two. Linebacker at one and two. DB at not on the list. Kicker at three. Definitely a great season. Is it a good enough team to win it all? Yes. Will we win it all? Damn if I know. Going to the end of the game. 3-0. 10-0. Nice little start. We played really poorly in the playoffs last year, so this is already a way better start. 10-7, and that way better start is, like, gone. We've done nothing. Nice field goal before half. Up by 10. Up by 17. And that will be the dagger. Defense doing a really good job with these short fields, and we're taking advantage of it. 30 to 17 is going to be the final as you move on to the divisional round. Should have had that bye week and kind of proven that we did not need to be playing a game in the wild card round. Either way, won that game and we're moving on. Can't really ask for much more than that. Flanagan has absolutely been a goon. Coakley uh, with a uh, two interception game as well. But man, Flanagan has been ridiculous. Like, sure, it's the Chiefs' scheme, but we have seen, you know, better tight ends do worse. So, I'm impressed. Regardless, the Packers versus the Giants, I mean, historically, we should have them, you know, have the nod for the you know, last couple of decades. But we shall see how that goes. At home, of course, in a rainy one, it would appear. Surprised this isn't snow, but sure. End of the game. 
Left to right is them. We are up by three, up by six. They will get a touchdown, which erases that lead immediately. Six to seven still. Defense is doing its job. Offense is doing absolutely nothing. Second half, get the touchdown on the two-point, which is great. Up by seven, up by 14 in the fourth quarter. Packers had a chance, threw a pick. Dane Belton will seal the game pretty much. And we win by 21. The Packers had so many opportunities that just weren't scoring somehow. Uh, Look at the numbers. Uh, Thurston was amazing. Love got locked up. Jacobs was meh. Cook was pretty good. Flanagan, again, just wide receiver, tight end one, whatever you want to even call him. He's just he's just one. Armstead with a sack, one for Tib and Burns to go with it. Rake Straw and Belton with interceptions. So defense mainly really heating up here as you head on to the championship round. Definitely a win getting to this championship round. Rebuild win. But can we win it all? That would be uh, definitely a spectacular way to finish what felt like a pretty lackluster rebuild up to this point. Championship round. It could still be the Cowboys. They did sneak their way in, and it will not be. It'll be the Rams. I've seen them beat some pretty good teams, though. Seven overalls on them, but EA gonna EA. Might even be one of our next rebuild teams, the Rams. Definitely a team in the hole a little bit as well, especially when you consider in-game where... A guy like Stafford, a guy like Cooper Cup are going to be pretty much irrelevant very shortly. Uh, and the Bills are in the Super Bowl. That that region of the country could be a representative Super Bowl there. New York, if you will. Kind of, for both teams. 17-0. Uh, 17-0. Still 17-0. 20-0. Still 20-0. This defense is cooking. 27-7. The offense drives down and wastes almost all of the clock, and we are going to win a 27-14 game as we head on to face the Buffalo Bills. Thurston cooking up again. Throw interceptions. That's basically our opponent's game plan against this team. Reggie Cook, not as great as normal. Uh, Favors did well. Neighbors did well. And uh, unfortunately, Flanagan didn't really have a game that we're used to from him. But didn't matter. You know, he could take a break every once in a while. Thibodeau. Uh, Burns, you know, a bunch of sacks from both sides. Pick for Banks and a dub for the Giants. Then the real question I have, though, is any dev ups? Tell me the running back went up in dev. Obviously, the quarterback did, but tell me the running back was also a part of this dev up scheme, if you will. The Bills, as we knew, uh, 13 and 4 versus their 12 and 5. The running back did go up in dev. Thursday goes up in dev as well, which, I mean, surprises absolutely nobody, but. Uh, we love to see Reggie Cook open dev. That is nice. Short out of lead. Energizer and what the hell was that one? Second wind or some crap. Uh, but a Thurston actually gets to a 90 overall and has Omaha, is that? It's kind of busted. Two to medium. Uh, you know, very accurate quarterback. Obviously, abilities. Omaha, closer, safety valve, quick draw, spin cycle, and protected. Some of those are pretty crap, but protected, closer, and Omaha are actually not bad because closer, you know, helps get Omaha. And anytime you can get that ability, it's really good. Uh, favors now a 92 overall. Definitely good stuff. Uh, and then we already looked at Thurston's dev up, didn't we? Boom, X-Factor. But what about the defense? Anything on the defense? I am looking around, and I don't see anything. Wait. Was House... Was House an X-Factor? We didn't really look at the devs. Was Dion House actually an X Factor? What what other devs did we have that I'm not sure of? O line love never even developed all the way through, so we don't even know. Defensively, was there anyone else here? Armstead, no. Okay, I mean, sure, we'll take an X Factor safety for the future. Why the hell not? Not that we're gonna be here for it anyways, but that is definitely something. Send coverage for Rake Strong. Obviously, all these corners are pretty much all man coverage only. 78-9, it is what it is. It's better than, you know, some of the other guys we have. But the final game, we've had some luck hitting the media day. Up at five overs on, overalls on them. Could this be a pretty spectacular finish? Year five. Going to the end of the game, the Bills start off with seven. We're used to stopping teams pretty often. Uh, seven all, the Bills regain the lead, but it's by three. We take that back. And huge touchdown for half gives us the seven-point lead. Bills answering back, though, and get another short field. They are up by seven. One touchdown from them is going to win it. And with their field position and the fact that they're pushing the ball. Wow, they just end the game. Okay. Screw it. Our defense sucks. I thought it was good. It was the reason why we did things. But no, they ended the game on, uh, you know, that last drive of like 10 minutes or something. I don't even know, but... 
yes, the offense wasn't great, but you cannot win a game when your defense needs to stop and they just don't even come close. They don't even sniff a stop. And I don't want to see anything about that. I am just despicableized. I don't even know what that is. But look at how long. It was a nine-minute drive. Nine effing minutes. You've got to be kidding me. Surely, dude. But uh, that is it. That is going to be the rebuild. Still, oh, of course, it's Jalen Hyatt. You can't script this stuff, man. You just can't. Is Eli Manning their backup quarterback as well? Nick Short, the tackle, gave a bunch of sacks. I mean, imagine we would have won because of him giving up sacks. We almost drafted him. That would have been a reverse of what we just seen. Three and a half from Dexter. He wanted that Super Bowl so bad. And his team just let him down. Rasul Douglas with a pick. And ultimately, a L for the Giants. But we did once again make the Super Bowl. We competed. And that's really all you can ask for. We did a pretty good job. And once again, we are going to be regressing in team talent quite a bit. So it's not like we'd be like, oh, just play one more. Just do it. Well, at the end of the day, we should have won it this year. And the fact that we didn't, despite the fact that we're about to get way worse, tells me another season is basically wasted. It's basically a waste. You have regressions for the most part. And then, of course, you lose some of those starters like Okereke. And, I mean, I imagine, even though this money just bumped up to 61 mil, you lose Brian Burns as well as you do like a one-year deal, tag the quarterback, and then lose Burns. But so, one way or another, you are losing a significant starter in Okereke. Uh, but we're going to re-sign uh, the players we can. Uh, also, I didn't even finish favors, so that's that's fun. Seven-year, 119, so I basically have to pay him the 36, so that's even more money down the drain. Yeah, that's a GG with having to do that. A 72 million, can't even do the tag for him, so that plan with Burns is gone. Yeah, that's a GG in the rebuild, my boys. That is That was the best we're going to get. You have to pay the quarterback. You're losing a lot of starters. can't believe Okereke is not really regressing that hard, but I just want to see this drop off real quick. 93, I don't want to see the Phil's staff. I they, they know better than anyone that this is about to get ugly. They left. They are gone. But here it is. 93 overall. We sim. And the talent drop off is down to... Yeah, that's not true. <laughs> we did not only go down by one. Losing Burns. Multiple linemen, I think it was. Uh, who else? A linebacker, uh, right end. I mean, we lost so much and we lose one overall. That's just not true. But regardless of the point, let's take a look at the team we got. I'm also kind of curious a little bit to see what free agency is like. 30 million. Can't believe we had to pay favors that much because he didn't take the offer. Josh Allen's there. Trey Smith. Uh, Chris McCaffrey still really good, which is surprising. Chris Jones is amazing. Waddle, of course, Burns. Ward, this is a stacked free agency group. So year five is like the year for every team. To be like, okay, yeah, we're screwed, <laughs> basically. Um, but let's take a look at the squad and call it a rebuild, which I would consider a success. Should have won the Super Bowl, didn't, but we at least got there. That's that's a dub. Malik Neighbors, I think his release sucks, but everything else is great. 79 release, everything else is great, just like we said. Basically, that's that's the gist of it. Then we move on to Favors, the 92 overall, with pretty bad release as well. Everything else is great, though, except for Deep Route, which is A-OK -okay in my book as well. Uh, and then we move on to Flanagan, who I think is just going to be a straight-up goon. 91 overall, X-Factor, ridiculous catching, ridiculous route running, decently fast. He's a good player. He's definitely a good player. We move on to the running back, Cook, who actually kind of exceeded expectations by not even being a 90 overall and yet putting up 4.3 yards per carry plus with some touchdowns and some yards, obviously. Thurston, the 90 overall, who is missing a little bit in the deep accuracy, but overall is a pretty good quarterback. Under pressure is a little iffy, so it's throwing the run and play action, but that's fine. Uh, and then we move on to, I guess, Andrew Thomas. because, And I guess maybe Evan Neal because they are real-life players of this team. 30 years old for Andrew Thomas. Amazing pass blocker, yet giving up double-digit sacks almost every single season. Make it make sense, EA. That's all we ask. Make it make sense. 28 years old for Neal, and he is uh, utterly garbage. I mean, that pass block finesse is maybe the worst I've ever seen. And that's even like straight-up rookies coming out of the draft. Uh, well, look at Felton, I suppose. The backup middle linebacker doesn't really matter. He just kind of showed up. He's the backup the whole time. Great block shed. Zone coverage is okay. But yeah, not the best linebacker I've ever seen. Would love to see a little more balance. Specifically, just in general, some more zone coverage. Uh, Coakley, 26 years old. Great zone. Decently fast. He is obviously worth it as a safety. Unfortunately, though, I do believe Dane Belton's going to be pretty damn low in zone. 84 overall. Yeah, 81 zone. 
He's a good dev, decent overall, but he's he's not really the best that he could have been. Then we move on to Thibodeau, 97 overall. Who let this guy cook that hard? 98 power move, 76 block shed, ridiculously fast. Awareness, play rec, pursuit, tackle, hit power, strength, all of that is great. It's amazing, some of the best in the league. Uh, and then we move on to the corners. Uh, let's go look at uh, Deontay Banks first, who actually got... Uh, exceeded in overall by Rick Straw this season. 28 years old, never dev'd up. He's a good player, but with a dev up, he could have been a great player. Uh, then we move on to Rick Straw, of course, who is now an 89 overall, 26-year-old. Amazing man, very good press and zone, all that good stuff. Definitely the best corner on this team based on ratings now. Then we move on to the other corner. We have four really good corners. Corey Burns, maybe the future with Deontay Banks needing a contract. I would move everyone up a slot. That would make a lot of sense to save some money as well. And then we look at the six foot five corner being wasted. ED overall. No one asked about the goals. And then it drops you all the way back to the main menu, which makes, well, the main adjust lineup screen, I should say, which makes like no sense. Amazing man. Basically no zone coverage, though. And then D line, we'll look at Atkinson and then Dexter. Atkinson is actually really good. 90 overall. 96 finesse. 73 block shed, which is really strong. Then we move over to Dexter Lawrence, the 99 overall, 31-year-old, who has 98 power move, 80 finesse, 95 block shed, 99 strength, 99 awareness, 98 play rec, 96 tackle, 97 pursuit, 88 impact, 85 hit power, an absolute goon. And speaking of absolute goons, you guys have been absolute goons if you made it this far into the video, which if you did, maybe leave a like if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you're new if you're not new. I do appreciate getting support on the channel. Maybe follow me on Twitter, Jerome P. Care, second channel, P. Care Plays for Nomad and Content. And what team would you guys like to see next? Texans was up there. Rams, maybe. Some other teams that maybe I'm not even, you know, they aren't even on my radar. So let me know in the comment section below. And that is about it. Thanks for watching. Hope you guys come back for next video. But until next video, 